again, we are live with you from the LinkedIn Hub at Advertising Week, and I am with Lucien Boyer. He is the president and global CEO of Havaz Sports and Entertainment. How fun. I mean, sports and entertainment. I mean, it can't get any better, right? And you get to do both together, probably, and mix them in with other cool stuff. So I'm just expressing my jealousy right off the bat. <laughs> um, I want us to start talking about... Um, you know, you, you were, we were talking about a slightly different philosophy of engagement that you have. I mean, you, it's a, it is a new world. No one will deny that. And so there must be many new philosophies on engagement, and I definitely want to talk about your thoughts on that. Well, what, what I think, and it's been like that for a long time, but it has not been recognized as a very important thing so far, that you can't really talk to people about things that they don't care. And actually, we have a global survey with Havas, which is called Meaningful Brands, that tell us a very scary thing about the brand uh, perception by people. And basically, 76% of brands won't be missed if they were to disappear tomorrow morning. Oh, that's, that's not a good news. No, not for advertisers. And why is that? <laughs> because they are not meaningful enough. People think that they can be commoditized, so they, they appreciate the product and the service, but the brand they don't really care about. The only brand that are really concerned are the ones that can bring something more in people's life. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> it's about what you really care for. And actually, what you care for is what you have decided to be a very important part of your life, which is most of the time your passion. Mm. So what we think about engagement is that if you start with people's passion, you can start the conversation in a very engaging way. When you travel with somebody that you don't know and you see that this somebody is, let's say, reading a surf magazine and you're fan of surf, you are going to have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Much more than if it's just somebody who has the same age same um, uh, education yeah, so or some revenue. Just demographics or whatever. So it's, demographics are not relevant to mm -hmm. make engagement. Engagement is about how people uh, believe in what is important for them. Mm -hmm. So passion is really a way to create engagement. I mean, I think passion is a, is a very strong thing. So it's not only just thinking and being kind of consumer-centric, but it's, it's thinking beyond who they are and much more about what they love. And then working backwards from there, right? We, we believe in what people are when they are fans of something. And we are all fans of something. It's, of fans are not the special spaces of people with colors in stadium to support their team. It's you and me and our passions. Mm -hmm. So if you start to decipher what friendship means and what people expect from whoever is providing a sort of better access or a better experience of, their, of what they are a fan of, mm -hmm. then it starts to be an interesting way to drive the relationship between brands and people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're absolutely right. There are so many different kinds of ways of fanship, as you put it. And you know, I'm a fan of many, many things. But we cannot deny that sports and entertainment, and especially things like sports and music, that's big like a drivers. home run. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, big drivers. You call it big drivers. I say home run. But ultimately, it's the same. So is, is one of your focuses kind of how to maximize that or how to harness that amount of passion and, and amount of fanship and and utilize it to, to engage consumers with their brand? Well, actually, there are many ways to, uh, to be fan of something. And we have, uh, we, we have decided to take it very seriously and to engage a lot of research to understand what are the driver of brand engagement in, in passion. And actually, we had a very interesting partnership with the University of South California and the Annenberg Lab mm. of Innovation on brand, um, uh, on basically the logics of engagement. There are eight different logics. Oh wow, we've broken it down. We've broken so you have it into the a logic of now. entertainment, which is very different from the logic of identification, the logic of immersion, or even the logic of expertise. If you're an expert, you will take the friendship very seriously. You are going to be interested in the statistics. Uh, if you are in the logic of social integration, it's not so much about the sport itself, it's about getting together, be with the others, having great talking moments. Talking with friends, yeah, exactly. Having Where the logic moment. of entertainment is mean that you are happy to have a two hours show or to enjoy the game for two hours. The logic of, logic of identification is when you are going to wait for all week for those two hours where you are going to be immersed in something. Mm -hmm. So all this logic will help you to tell the right story to the people you are addressing against this passion. So it's more sophisticated than just badging an event. It's about how you can play a role and enhancing the experience of fans. But how are you going to distinguish between those eight logics? Of, I mean, you have you know, a million fans who are going to watch the game. Yeah, so, so, know, how do you, so, so um, let me tell you something. To, to, to define those logics, what we did, we, we partnered with IBM and we listened to tweets 
across two big events in football, as an example, mm -hmm. was the final of the Champions League and the um, World Cup last year. Mm -hmm. And we were able to listen to 9 million tweets and understanding what people are talking about, you can identify the kind of conversation they have of those different things. Conversation so, trends. Which means that content and passion drive data. Because when people are uh, sharing on their passion, they are very open. When you talk about data and personal data, people are quite private. They want to hold very close to their chest, finance, health, family. But when it comes to passion, they're ready to share. They, they want to put it all out they there. They put yeah. everything out there on Instagram and Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. And they say a lot about themselves because this is their passion, so they're very true. They're very mm -hmm. sincere. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to profile people and to get access to data that are very useful. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So another thing that you are, uh, you, you seem to have you philosophize a lot about this stuff. You, you have good philosophies on it. So you're saying that the, now is the, the time, the, the collision between communication, entertainment, marketing, and commerce. That's a lot of things to try to marry at the same time, right? So let me give you an example. Uh, very recently, and we have a very, very strong partnership with Universal Music Group, which gives us an access to music, which is absolutely amazing, because this starts with passion, genuine passion, which means people that like true artists that do great music. But basically what we did was, for one of our clients in the UK, Very.com, so it's, um, it's an e-commerce, mm -hmm. uh, we created a shoppable music video that was a cover of Summertime to promote their <laughs> summer season clothes. And what happened was that this video clip was so uh, popular that it, was, it went viral, 1.5 million uh, video views. But it was also clicked through because it was a very great way to show the, the, the clothes and the, and the, the collection. Mm -hmm. So it, it gave them 64% increase in sales year on year Whoa. with no media buying. So, wow. But that started with a great artistic thinking, a great cover of a great show, a great uh, song, uh -huh. a great music video that was um, um, embraced by fans and then they realized that the brand were really naturally embedded in the show and then it went through commerce so this is exactly what we can do but that's a tough model Lucia. i mean you have to admit that not every, yeah, you can't yeah, you yeah, can't recreate true. that all the time really. you can look for solutions mm -hmm. and if you look that direction then you can be more efficient but that means that you need to be brave because sometimes you don't know what you are going to find mm -hmm. so it's not so um clear as the traditional media and uh advertising a model where you know exactly what kind of GRP you are going to get against the type of media investment. But the reality is that sometimes you know that you get, but you are going to get less than before because the performance is not so great because people are not engaging with this kind of message. Whereas if you start with the passion, you create an experience, you create stories that people are going to really own and share, then you are going to have amazing uh, uh, leverage effect and great ROI. The only thing is that you don't know exactly where you go, but there is one thing you can do is to monitor real time because the data are going to be uh, collected all the time. All the time, of course. So yeah. you can also steer what you do. You don't mm -hmm. need to wait for the end. And adapting yourself, being quite flexible, being Agile, able to, as Jason yeah, 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 to <laughs> respond to people's reaction real time, then you can optimize and at the end of the day, you can have very, very strong results. So I think that any brand can try. Well, absolutely. I think every brand should try because I think that this is definitely a better model and and better uh, for the consumers yeah. to be happy about what they're engaging exactly. in. And I wish you the best of luck with this task. I think it's a tough task, but I'm thank glad you. you guys are doing it. Thank you so much. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me.